our first little encounter was at a vegan restaurant. So, like, I was very clear about my lifestyle. And before I started dating him, I was like, I am never dating no guy that ain't vegan. Like, that's out the window. Fuck that. Oh, wow. And then I met him, and then all of that went yeah, out. Yeah, you know that, <laughs> um, that, that Philly swag came out. But, um, that shit yeah. <laughs> You're listening to Big Facts with Big Bank and DJ Scream. Live for First Class Sounds, you know who it is, DJ Scream. We got some special guests in the building today. We're first off, Big Bank, Baby Jade, of course. Yes. And a special guest, Pinky Cole, CEO and founder of Slutty Vegan. And Derek oh, Hayes, sure. CEO and founder yeah. of Big Dave's Yay. Cheese Steaks. What's up? What's Live up? on Big what Facts. Up? What's up, people? What's up, people? What's going on? What's up? Just happy to be here. Definitely. Happy to be Thank y'all. Appreciate y'all. Yes. We appreciate y'all pulling up. Yes, with the goodies. So I'm going to start with the most asked question, being that, uh, well, first off, congratulations on uh, your your uh, your recent addition to the family. Which one? And, and the upcoming. <laughs> and the upcoming, right. Yeah, yeah. And the yeah. upcoming. We've been hot in the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. But the most asked question when people uh, knew that you guys were coming was, how does the household work with a vegan and you're not vegan, right? No, I'm not vegan. A vegan and someone who's not vegan and you you pushing vegan and you pushing chicken and beef. Like, he how does that be. work? He, he really don't eat beef. <laughs> you don't eat beef. Hey, no, but listen, it's funny because a lot of people do ask us that question. Um, I do a lot of grill stripping at the house. You know mm. what I'm saying? We got mm. we got a commercial grill, so I strip it down the griddle. So whatever I make, I make sure I clean it real good. You know what I'm saying? So she get what she want, her vegetables and all that. But since also, we've been like together, ve- so like vegans are like. On some shit like where it's almost like an allergy type shit. Yeah, oh, so no, she don't play, she yes. play, wow. by, she play by I her never shit. knew that. So listen, nah, so funny story, it. y'all. So when we first met, our first little encounter was at a vegan restaurant. So like I was very clear about my lifestyle. And before I started dating him, I was like, I am never dating no guy that ain't vegan. Like that's out the window. Fuck that. Oh, wow. And then I met him and then all of that went yeah, out. Yeah, you know that, <laughs> um, that, that Philly swag came but, out. Um, that shit yeah. out <laughs> but in the household, it's really cool because... I know how to cook for a vegan and a non-vegan. Mm. And, like, he don't impede on my lifestyle, and he don't be like, why you eating that? Like, I eat what I eat, he eat what he eat, and we respect each other. And that's how yeah, and she could cook. You'd be thinking, like, damn, like, how you make this taste like this and not tasting it? She yeah. can cook, so yeah. it works out for us. Okay. <laughs> so you tried them, um... What the meals, them vegan hot wings and shit, what it is? <laughs> cauliflower. Yeah, he yeah. tried everything. Like, I tried all of it. Honestly, since, since we've been together, I've been eating a little, you know, a, a lot different. But I'm putting my, my swag and my seasoning on and all that to give it that taste so it ain't, you know, just like, you know, vegetables. And we able to help each other out. Like, I don't eat beef as much as I used to. Mm. Um, I'm more seafood. I love seafood. Anybody that knows me, I eat seafood my whole life. Yeah. So, mm. And that's why, for real, for real, the salmon egg roll is working big days because I was able to create the seasoning, you know what I'm saying, that people love to, you know, get that and seafood delicious. taste. Yeah, so Very. appreciate that. So I'm able to give everybody everything they want, you know what I'm saying, whether it's beef, chicken, or salmon. So I'm, I'm, I'm uh, yeah, catering I got, everything. I got, um, I got turned on, like, to the whole restaurant. Shout out to my nigga, Tak. Oh, he, Tak, um, my dog, man. Yeah, Shout yeah, out that's to my brother. Too. Like, he turned me on, and he was like, yo, he was like, my man's got a new spot down there when you were um at the gas station. Yeah. And done with it, yeah. Like, and it was like, I went there for the first time, and I couldn't even get in or like eat or order or nothing because it was like so crazy. Yeah, that gas station so crazy. used to be humping. Like. So like, when did you understand like, okay, this shit is bigger than snowballs and cheesesteaks, and I gotta get to a bigger space because it's too packed in here and it's not gonna work. Honestly, is is when we can no longer control the traffic, and I was getting into yeah, it with the Indian yeah. guy every other day, and I'm like, you know what? I got to get my shit together, you know, yeah. get these funds together to build this location and, and get up and running because I knew that when Eve had posted it and it yeah, went yeah, viral, yeah. Yeah. it was starting to get national attention. And I'm like, this shit bigger than food. And yeah. and I and while I had the culture and I can make people understand, like, you don't got to be a basketball player or a rapper to make it. You could be an entrepreneur. So I'm like, I got, the, put in some hard yeah, work I got the chance to really show people an right. opportunity to do that. And I felt like while I had it, I wasn't going to you know, miss up yeah, on the yeah, opportunity. Yeah. So I took it. <laughs> so I knew the whole time I was selling more than food. Yeah. 
That's all right. That's dope. So y'all been on a massive winning streak, uh, featured in Essence, People Magazine, all the publications, right? And, of course, when people look at social media, they see the wins. But let's talk a little bit about before y'all was having the big wins, like a little bit of the struggle. I know your first business actually burned down. Yeah. And you know what's funny? This is a full circle moment because my first radio interview was with you. Yes. Give it up for DJ. <laughs> my first radio interview. First radio interview. Looking crazy oh, coming off she the brought me, She brought me that, she brought me that burger. I'm like, oh, no, no. <laughs> Looking crazy, tired. Yeah. But, and then um, look at us now. Right. Yeah. Here we, we waiting are. on it. We stay right. crack. Right. It's moment. like crack now. Yeah, got to uh, have it. It wasn't easy for me. Um, i always been an entrepreneur and a hustler. Mm -hmm. um, for the people who don't know my story, my father did 22 years in prison. Mm. So I grew up in the prison system. Obviously, I wasn't behind bars, but I had to go to prison and get swaddled down every single time we went to see my dad. You only got two hours. So, like, my mindset was like, this ain't my life. I ain't going to do this. Mm. So I became an entrepreneur. And as young as 14, I'm throwing parties. I'm selling food. I'm selling candy. And then I got older and had my own restaurant called Pinky's Jamaican and American Restaurant. And that restaurant was seemingly successful, but I was hustling back. That was in right? New York, right? That was in New York City. Right. Um, cause I was vegan and vegetarian at the time, but I was selling jerk chicken. So I wasn't being authentic <laughs> yeah. with who I was. Right. So yeah. you weren't you, living in your truth. I was not yeah. living in my truth. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And this is such a, a serious conversation for people to understand, especially entrepreneurs that are listening to this. You have literally got to walk in your truth because if you don't, shit will literally fall apart. And that's what happened to me. Right. But I'm so glad it happened that. I lost my car, got repoed, I got kicked out of my apartment, I went flat broke, and I literally, everything that I ever touched that used to turn to gold literally was nothing now. Mm. But I needed all of those things to happen because all it was was very expensive-ass school. You know what I'm saying? That's so facts. that That's expensive facts. school taught me how to be a better entrepreneur, how to be a better leader, so that when I create a slutty vegan, I'm like, all right, I've been here before. I know what this feels like. I know what to do different. So the journey has not always been easy. Most times people be like, oh, y'all overnight success. Overnight where? Right. Yeah. <laughs> overnight where? The finished product. Everybody I had moments the finished product, you where know my saying? wages got garnished, mm. where I had tax issues, Right where I was on the verge of being about to close, like this shit, this shit ain't for the weak. Mm. And being a restaurant tour is probably one of the hardest professions in the world. One because restaurants don't last, mm. right? Yeah, that Two because fickle. you got to yeah. be a babysitter, yeah. you got to be a therapist, right? You got to take care of people, make sure everybody is good, and still maintain your sanity all while paying bills. Like mm. that shit ain't no joke. So to have to go through all of that is very difficult. But the reward is so much greater on the other side because I would not have it any other way. Mm. Yeah. How do y'all deal with? How do, okay. Go ahead, Trent. Now, so how y'all deal with like keeping the recipe right? Because a big thing, some of my chef partners is like, I have to run this restaurant. I can't nobody else cook this yeah, shit. How yeah. I cook it. So yeah. how do y'all keep it? Yeah. So so honestly, that was a big test for the both of us because of course people love us, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. coming to the restaurant, if you don't see me on the grill, you know. I, I don't know like if I want the sandwich, like, so I know I had yeah. to I had to you know get the recipes all the way down so that no matter who making it, you know you feel confident mm -hmm. in the meal and you getting the same thing over and over, mm -hmm. and you can't scale unless you can get the recipes and, and the right. procedures down. Right. Like right. I don't care how good your product is or what you put together, mm -hmm. you'll just have one location that's popping because the other one won't do the same thing the other one do because it don't taste the same. The people, mm -hmm. the let me tell you, the culture when you walk into a place is everything. Mm -hmm. Like. We yeah. go off of what we see. Like, I was telling a guy the other day, he was like, you know, I feel like you need to, you know, work on your ticket times and get your lines down. I'm like, you don't understand the culture. People eat off what they see. Right. When you ride past Big Days and you see the line down the block, you like, this you shit popping. Yeah. I want to yeah. get yeah. Yeah. I want to yeah. see what the, what, you know, what, shit what's going gotta on. Shit got to be good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, if you don't see nobody not, in the line, then nobody yeah. eating this shit. shit so, like, like, that's a fact. So, what we do good as, you know we what I'm saying? We go to crickets. What we do good at, we, I think we understand the culture. Like, I think that... Pink and I both, like, we, we really understand what people want. So, you know, growing forward and growing your brand is easier. It's not as hard than another person, you know, that's growing a restaurant and got to really physically sit there and work every day because they're scared to let the next person do the job. Mm -hmm. right. We we let people do the job. We let people grow. We let people get careers, you know, mastering their own, you know, households and being able to take their own lives and their own journeys. And the only way you could do that is if you master the recipes and have faith Facts. in other people. Yeah. So I think that's what we both do well. And you can't grow inside of the store. Like, 
Nah. Slutty Vegan wasn't able to grow until I stepped outside of the restaurant, mm. right? And that means processes and procedures and getting a co-packer to put your seasoning together so you ain't got to make it every single day. The minute that I stepped outside of my restaurant, mm-hmm. I saw growth. Mm-hmm. When I was in there every day, all day, trying to be the line cook, trying to shake fries, trying to do schedules and do all of that, I couldn't get nothing done. And then come and do interviews. Like, I'm I'm pouring out of my cup and I'm not able to fill from anybody else's cup because yeah. I'm so depleted and I'm yeah. so drained because my stuff ain't together but as soon as I stepped outside that restaurant then I started to see evolution in my business and it started to grow mm. but you gotta have your shit together though you mm. can't step out the restaurant if your shit ain't together because it's gonna fall apart so you mm. gotta have it together so <laughs> anybody so listening have your shit together if you're planning on stepping out but mm. it works when you step out because you get to see what's really going on yeah. you know what you're really working with with your team mm. right so I know another big thing with you is that you make like a concerted effort to consciously place your restaurants in areas that are typically known as food deserts. Mm -hmm. So what kind of made you aware of like the whole food desert concept and what made you feel like you were the person that was going to change that for our community? So, funny story, I didn't know that I was going to be that person. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't wake up like, I'm going to be the one that's going to be this person. Like, I didn't yeah, know Yeah, right? like. <laughs> when I started Slutty Vegan, it was really just solving a personal problem. Right. And that's where the greatest passions and purposes come out of when you're just solving a problem for yourself. Right, right. But then you realize that you're really saving the world and helping yes, big picture. Yes. And I'm like, me, I'm from East Baltimore, from around the way. I'm saving the world. Yes, you know what I'm saying? Yes. So when when I solved the problem of wanting some food on a late night because I was tired of eating a side salad and fries from Chick-fil-A because I wanted some food, yeah. right? I created this brand, but I realized there were so many people that looked like us that didn't know that fries was vegan, Thanks. right? They mm-hmm. didn't know, like, oh, I can eat that. That's vegan. Like, what is that? Like, what is vegan food? People don't know. A lot of black people did not know what vegan food was mm-hmm. before mm-hmm. Slutty right. Vegan came along, right? right? Mm-hmm. They think you could put eggs in it and it still be vegan, right? Yeah. But ignorance is bliss until you educate people. So now I got the opportunity to start educating people on right. vegan food. Yeah. So I realized that in certain areas, in lower-income communities, in urban areas, uh, which we call food deserts and areas that are right in the middle of gentrification, they don't have access to healthier options, even if it starts at vegan comfort food, right? right? So I said, all right, let me do something different because I'm a master marketer. I wanted to be able to positive positively manipulate my situation by putting food in areas that they probably otherwise wouldn't see them. Right. So when you think about vegan food, you think about them in rich white neighborhoods. Exactly. No. We put in vegan exactly. food in a hood. Mm-hmm. We put in vegan food in areas that are historic. We making people think about vegan food in a way that they've never thought about it before. And right. funny enough, 97% of the people who come to Slutty Vegan are not even vegan. They meat eaters. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, the intention is met. And not only do I do that, I have a 70% to 30% portfolio ratio where I purchase most of my properties and then Mm -hmm. I rent the 30% of them. And the reason why I purchase them, because it's not just about food. I'm building an ecosystem where I'm showing people that you can literally go into these communities and raise the value of the community just with your presence alone. I don't know about y'all, but anywhere I go, I want to raise the value, Mm -hmm. right? Right. If I walk out the door, I want to know that my value was important in that space and I raise the consciousness right. of everybody around right. me and that's exactly what I do with Slutty Vegan and it's been working Yeah. how yeah, big of a yeah. part do you think Atlanta played in your success all of it 100% <laughs> ain't no city Baltimore like I love you but 100% listen <laughs> yeah, no city neither like one of us would have had this level of success if it wasn't for the city of Atlanta. And I'm not from Atlanta, yeah. right? I'm a transplant. I went to Clark Atlanta University. I became Miss Clark Atlanta University. Mm-hmm. So I'm a peach by uh, by affiliation, <laughs> yeah. right? But I An love honorary this. Peach. honorary peach, right? <laughs> and you can't tell me nothing different with my Zero. Baltimore accent Zero. and everything. Yeah. <laughs> but one thing I love about Atlanta is if you talented and you humble and yeah. you hungry, People in Atlanta are going to support support you you. no matter what it is. They're going to support you. And even to this day, it's been almost four years later, I walk around Atlanta and they treat me like the mayor. Right. And it feels so good because yeah. I'm like, damn, I'm doing something right. right. I'm pouring into the city and the city pouring into me. And I'm going to keep doing that as long <laughs> as I have slutty vegans, as long. Even when I go to other states, it's always going to be slutty vegan Atlanta because yeah, yeah. I'm here because of the city of Atlanta. Right. Yeah. yeah. It, 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 and y'all pulling yeah. up with the truck. You got and we pull yeah. Yeah. pulling up. Yeah. <laughs> Is it disheartening? I know uh, some time ago, one of your locations got broken into and vandalized. Is it disheartening to see that because you do so much for the city and the community? that somebody would violate and 
breaking a slutty. I was angry. I ain't gonna lie. I'm gonna give you the real I, answer. Today. Please like, get a real answer. <laughs> so at first I was mad, like, damn these motherfuckers. I just remodeled, but then I'm like, you know what? That's great press. It come with the territory. It come with the territory. Yeah, they got exactly. me. You want to destroy imagine. my story? Guess what? Now everybody <laughs> supporting me and talking about my business. Exactly. Mm. And yeah. all press is good press. You mm. can always find a way to make good press. And that ain't the traditional answer that somebody would say. But I'm mm. like, at first I was upset. But I'm like, guess what? Obviously, he really wanted a burger. He was hungry. <laughs> I created all something he stole that was a burger? No, he stole tablets. But oh, you know okay. what? Ta- fo- ta- I got five locations yeah. and I got a multi-million dollar company. What I care about a goddamn tablet for? Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. But at the end of the day, it had me in every single newspaper and on every single news station and people are talking about Slutty Vegan. So mm. the return on investment of him stealing my tablets yeah, was, was worth more bigger. than mm. right. me losing no, I never looked at it that way. 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 Because when they like, literally just mad. got robbed for egg rolls last <laughs> week. Yeah, he it. got robbed too. They yeah, stole egg rolls. rolls. One of my cashiers got robbed for three egg rolls. How? So it's real out here. <sighs> what they do, drive we don't, we, don't, we don't take cash, so, you know what I'm saying? We only take cards. So when they when they want to take his cash, he pulled out the pistol and took the egg rolls. <laughs> no shit good like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that shit busting. <laughs> the egg rolls are banging. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> No. Nah, but it's crazy what people do out here nowadays. You know, we in a pandemic, so they taking full advantage of whatever they think they should be Man, doing. these niggas stretching that pandemic shit. Yeah. yeah. That shit <laughs> over with. I ain't even gonna lie. I don't think Atlanta, right, Atlanta, that shit over Atlanta with. never really seen the pandemic, I don't think, though. Nah. Because yeah, I think yeah. that we, we was able to uh, pivot through it and the businesses stayed yeah. open. People panic. The people that didn't panic, you see, they still standing. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. That's I, one, of the, one of the big wins I forgot to mention, y'all just bought a whole block, like, the whole yes, entire yes, let's block. Talk about we're, it. we're on let's our real estate shit right now. Yeah. yeah. Um, like she said, uh, you know, you gotta make differences in the neighborhoods. And right now, we're bringing up the neighborhoods by like we just bought the block. So we know we take a block of homes that shit and make it something. Mm-hmm. The community going now, the value will come up around there. Mm. You know, and that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to build those ecosystems that black people have. You know, chances and resources to say, all right, well. They see two other people that look just like them do it. We got some cash laying around. Let's go blast some blocks. Let's go put some money together and do the same thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's really all we're trying to do. Um, just like with our, our life insurance initiative, you know what I'm saying? Anything that we do, yeah, we're just trying that. to empower. Talk about that. Um, so right now we're doing this uh, life insurance initiative where um, if you're a black male and your household make $30,000 less than income, we're giving you fifty thousand uh, dollar life insurance policies through Prudential. Wow! Um, they that just, they don't have to pay for. No, not at all. Like hmm. there's no gimmick, no nothing on it. Cause a lot of people are like, man, what y'all making off of it? I'm just tired of seeing GoFundMe's and fish rides. I come from Philly. I come from the jungle. You know what I'm saying? Most of my homies, you know what I'm saying, wind yeah. up dead in jail. I was fortunate to make it out. So I know if I can make a change in the difference, and she come from Baltimore, so we come from same environments, and we got the ball in our hands. Why not do it when people are listening? You know what I'm saying? We, we got the voice. Mm-hmm. And I feel like a lot of people that get the voice, when they get it, they want to hold it because they want to be the man or the woman. And people will say, oh, you know, you look up to them, but yeah. use mm-hmm. that shit differently. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Everybody using it the same way. Use it to inspire neighborhoods and help people out and put on these different communities so people have opportunities. So we ain't got to make, you know what I'm saying, uh, chances and choices later on that we didn't want to make because we didn't have a resource. And you like, damn. Well, I ain't know I could have did this. Now nah, we putting this shit in front of your face. It's up to you know, up for you to right. um, accept it. What type of love and support y'all get from back home? Like, um, well, you go ahead. Um, I love my city, man. I'm actually going to Baltimore next week, um, and they they respect and love that I always hold my city down. Yeah, Atlanta is like what made the business successful, but they know where I'm from. Right, but, I, I, and Baltimore is like Baltimore <laughs> is like Atlanta minus the accent. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, Baltimore is forever in my heart. I love my city. That's what I was gonna ask you. Like, how did how did you feel when like the whole world was cracking on Baltimore, trying to get all of the Baltimore people to say? Two twenty two twenty two. It was cute. <laughs> I was laughing. I'm two. like, who they talking to? <laughs> but you know what? It's cool because there's something distinct to my city, right? Right. Like, right. My, I've been in Atlanta for a long time, and I still got my accent. I, yeah, I, I, yeah. I ain't got the I like y'all crabs. Yet. Oh yeah, he loved Baltimore crabs. And then the women, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, I was about to say women. Look, no, <laughs> women. Look they, they just had that. They just had that. They just had that, they just had that online today. They, they said that y'all know the difference between about. women and women. The woman. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, right. It's like, a difference. Hey, about? Get it together, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> we had cut all these fucking cameras off. <laughs> you know, you know, you got a couple person. <laughs> 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 but I want to say this though. Oh, he didn't God. mention this. 
We own 13 properties right now together. 13 blocks or t- 13 No, 13 properties. properties. Okay, so okay. there's that one block? We, we about to close on three houses um, yeah. next week. Okay. Yeah, but we only been together for two years. So I'm talking to the lovers out there, y'all. Mm. But you, you can really, like, build with somebody, and it don't have to take 10, 20 years to do mm. it. Like, if, you, if y'all got yeah. the same mission and yeah. an alignment, y'all can really build together and create. And that's just... Real estate, like we got businesses together, kids together. Yeah, we we like, made we made millions of dollars it. together in short, yeah. short time, yeah. but we use love to do it in friendship. We didn't use the money, you know. When you built that money, you'll never make it. I don't know about y'all, but when you just chasing the money, that shit don't come that way. Never. You know what I'm saying? No, when you, yeah, when you doing That's it that. authentically, you just focusing on your craft, and then you say, "Damn, shit coming my way now." Now I'm starting to get the bag. But with mm-hmm. us, we just putting plans together. And things started transpiring into what we wanted. So for us to purchase 13 properties in, in less than two years and have multi-million dollar companies together and separately, um, you yeah. know, is a blessing. That's a, That's a big deal. Yeah. That's yeah. a huge big deal. W. Yeah. Yeah. Big Sh- W. Shouts to, uh, I think it's David Shan's Social Proof Podcast. He was saying that uh, he realized at a certain point that he, he wants to be like a multi-multi-millionaire, but he might not want to be a billionaire because he wants to have balance. So I asked y'all, like, this shit can be stressful. Hustling, entrepreneurship, it can get stressful. But how do y'all maintain the balance so y'all don't get stressed out and <laughs> pinned down and everything? I, I, I think I, you, you, the other person got to be on the same page you on. That's right. the only way that shit yeah. But I'm work. saying individually. I know y'all got a team, but I'm saying just No, nah, but that's how, it, that's how it works. I'm going I'm to give you game, right? Mm-hmm. So next week, she got a speaking engagement. So I'm going to support her, and I fly with her to her engagements. I had engagement out in L.A. where I did something with Will Smith. She flew out there with me. We support each other, you know what I'm saying? So That's dope. we got that system that if we ain't working, well, we working because you working. Or, you know what I'm saying? I'm working because yeah, no, I'm that's working. Hard. Mm. Like, that's the way if we If we move. ain't working, then nah. we working. Yeah, yeah. like, yeah. I, yeah. it's, it's okay. certain yeah. situations that, you know, I, I had an opportunity, and I'm pretty sure she had an opportunity. If it don't make sense for the both of us, we don't move on it because we yeah. understand what we pushing together. Right. And, yeah, we do got our own separate, you know, situation entities, but we know to together mm-hmm. we're much more powerful yeah and then for me specifically when you said the billionaire i want to be a billionaire yeah for sure you right? want everything no, to come with it but it don't have nothing to do with money oh, you know right. What I'm right it's <laughs> it's the idea of impact and mm-hmm. creating something that has never been done before from where i'm from mm-hmm. so that right. every single little boy and little girl can see me this it. regular degular girl from around the way and say i could do it because pinky cole did mm-hmm. it so that is a personal goal for me mm-hmm. and again I say this all the time. I'm a magnet to money. I'm always get it, right? right? So, like, I've touched millions already, and to me it's just paper, right? Mm. I'm more concerned about the idea and impact and changing the lives of other people, and the idea of me getting to a billion dollars tells me that I've achieved my impactful dream, Mm. and now I can utilize any resource that I want to do whatever I want to transform the minds of people. Mm -hmm. So I'm on a money mission to get to that billion-dollar dream Mm -hmm. so that I can transform the idea of what people think about money. Mm -hmm. But I want people to be clear about the sacrifices you have to make. I guess that's what I'm kind of getting at. It's a a lot of sacrifices. It's a lot of them because while they partying, you working. Exactly. While you ain't ain't buying that that new Rolex or that that new paddock or whatever that came out or the new car came out, Mm -hmm. you investing in to yourself mm-hmm. people don't see that part it's people out here right now that's sacrificing in themselves that may not look you know as fortunate than others but they got more than others because they putting it all in themselves mm-hmm. like it cost us mm-hmm. over half a million dollars to build a location I could have right now a couple Bentleys, Rolls Royces, anything I want. Mm-hmm. I mean, I have nice shit. I live in a mansion but I could have more if I chose to put it all out there and let people see it mm-hmm. Right. but I think when you understand that part it don't, it, it's not an inconvenience for you because mm-hmm. you know what you want like in the right. end I know that I want to be a billionaire. I know that I want to own hundreds and hundreds of properties. And I know I want my kids to be good and my generations of, of family after that to be good. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I'm sacrificing that right now so it don't feel like a you know inconvenience to me because I know in my mind. I just you know said what this, the end goal is. Yeah, yeah. I just said yeah. this on Instagram the other day. Um, you control your mind. Your mind don't control you. We right. all wake up in the morning and you might be like, damn, I don't feel like doing this shit right now. But you just lost. You let your mind just control your whole body from being your ass about the bed and doing some shit you wanted to do. You know what I'm saying? So I think when you understand that, there's no inconvenience on what you want to be in your life. And then I want to tap in here real quick. When we talk about sacrifice, a lot of people don't talk about this, but you got to have a good team. Hell yeah. If you do not have a good team, you ain't got nothing, right? Like... 
the reason why we are able to do all of the things that we do is because we got soldiers on the ground that's making sure mm-hmm. that they are Pinky Cole and Derek Hayes in a room when we not in a room. Mm-hmm. And it's important to get those people that are in alignment with your vision because if they are, they're going to do whatever it takes to take you there. Exactly. But if they not and they're just working for a paycheck, then you're going to feel the sacrifice. You're going to feel the, the pain and, oh, I'm tired and I got to go in and fix shit all the time. You're going to feel that. They got to have your same integrity. They got to have the same ethos and integrity and when they do you'll see it it'll be fruitful you think about it it's just like relationships if you're in a relationship with somebody that's pouring into you you're mm-hmm. gonna feel it the person gonna look happier they're gonna look less stressed they're gonna be more positive all the time but if you're around somebody that's sucking your energy and depleting you all the time yeah. you're gonna see it the proof is gonna be in the pudding so that sacrifice is only when you don't have the right people right. yeah you make the sacrifices in the beginning and every single day is a sacrifice I want to be clear but when you got the right people around you that's helping you build your empire that sacrifice won't feel like so much hard work like how it used to mm. all right yeah what's the first step if somebody want to get into being a successful business person because a or lot an, of people or can't successful a, entrepreneur. A, 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 entrepreneur. Entrepreneur. Drop yeah. it on them so we actually about to solve that problem right now because we're coming out with a game it's Wait, no, not game. yet. That's early. Don't, don't drop it out. Uh, don't drop it yet. yet. All right, so I was going to... Facts. Yeah, okay, hold. I, I was going to drop it. Yeah, like, I was going to drop it. Yeah, you already said it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I didn't did say it, though. I How y'all don't leak a said, little bit of the lead? Right. I said, well, we got something well, special that's yeah, going to help special that's going, entrepreneurs. That's, that's going to help entrepreneurs. Like, if you never, ever knew shit about business, and the end of this situation, this game, you're going to know how to go, you know, get your LLC, how to, you know, get a trademark, all of the above if you never knew it. And we creating resources through this because that's what it's about, information. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, the, and the first step for entrepreneurs, and I'm specifically talking to the people that don't know the first thing about being an entrepreneur. I'm talking about you don't know how to get an LLC, you don't know nothing. All you got is an idea. It's confidence. Mm, and people do mm, not talk facts. about that enough. Facts. Right? Mm. Let me tell you yeah. something. I don't care how much money you got in your pocket. If you're a billionaire, a millionaire, a thousandaire, I'm going to walk in the room with the same energy. Mm. And that's my level of confidence. I don't care who it is. I don't care if you Kanye West. I don't care who you are. That level of confidence is what gets deals. Confidence gets deals. Sure. Not products, right? Not just story. It's confidence. You got to sell yourself to make other people, people want to buy. Yes, people will mm-hmm. give you a million gazillion dollars yeah. if they believe that you are confident in yourself. We did talk right? about it. Yeah. Yeah. If you are not confident in yourself, why the fuck do I want to give you some money? Like, exactly. If you don't believe that you can right. get to it. But if you believe with all of your might that ain't nothing going to stop you from getting to the goal, somebody is going to be attracted to that. Like, oh, I'm yep. willing to bet my bottom yeah. dollar on this person because at, at about when I'm sleeping, I know that this person is still going to be swaddling her legs and making sure that she's doing what she got to mm-hmm. do to make her dreams come true. Yeah. So confidence is key. And guess what? You can't pay for confidence. Nope. Ain't no yeah. class That's for that. Right. Yeah, we have an episode listen, about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I yeah, didn't yeah, even yeah. listen to that episode. Look, she right. come here. She, <laughs> listen, when you hear a motherfucker talking, bro, you when they leave out the room, you be like, oh nah, they was for real. Yeah. Oh no, yeah, no. Yeah. When they got real companies, but that's why, like, but that's why yeah. Kanye is, is is talked about how he talked about because whether people look at him as crazy or whatever, he's mm-hmm. confident. Mm-hmm. He confident. I believe him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. No, yeah. right. right. but what I'm, I'm just saying, like, like anybody with that at, type of company, I'm gonna believe. You can look at the Dame dashes. He's confident. I believe Dame. He, yeah. I, he's confident. <laughs> you know confidence is the belief in something. How, like, is, how do you right. separate confidence and cap? That's what we were talking about. Like, you well, be confident. Cap. Cap yeah, you know it. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. and cap gonna come get you. No, no. How do you separate? How do you separate confidence and arrogance? That's so, cap. so, so can't. They, this shit is thin Eric line. Ain't cap. So listen, that's a thin line. Nah, it well, is a thin line, but listen, to the family. It, it's all it's all very relative. Because I even tell people, either you gonna love me, you gonna be inspired, or you gonna be like, who this bitch think she is, you right? Gotta, right, right, right. You gotta be a little arrogant though. Right. Yeah, but but there is good arrogance, just like there is positive manipulation, right? Yeah. And good arrogance yeah. is being nah, that's confident, hard right now. That's but hard not right now. cocky, right? But still being humble at the same time. Mm. Like I'm gonna give you an example, like. I do not wear designer. I got on some Chanel sneakers. That's about it. That's mm. about probably the most expensive thing that I own materially because I don't need it because this right here is all the material that I need. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Right? Yeah. So I say all that to say that ain't arrogance. She lined her closet heavy. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I really don't wear designer though. Everybody's like, Pinky, I'm not wearing that shit. But listen, but I know my value, but that's not arrogance. That's right. worth. Exactly. And when you know your worth, mm. worth trumps everything. 
arrogance any day. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? Facts. And I feel like people that think that you're arrogant don't understand themselves. They don't have their confidence. Yeah. You know what I'm they saying? Don't have they or they lack yeah, whatever because, it is that because they feel if, like if you're I'm, arrogant about. If I'm right now happy about what I'm building, I'm not happy to brag to you. I'm trying to inspire you of what I'm doing. To want to build take some that shit, shit wrong, yeah. then that's up to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm that's saying? That's a personal so problem. When people say, you know, people are bragging or every time this, this, this person come around, they want to talk about what they're doing, that's because you ain't doing shit with yourself. Mm -hmm. Facts. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Ask you who you think you I just told you. I'm a guy. Who want to talk about the shit that I'm doing? I want to be happy about right. the shit that I'm doing. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I'm not going to keep my mouth closed if I'm out here busting my ass making shit happen. I want to inspire yeah. people. If you can't handle yeah. it, then that's up to you. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. You know personal saying? problem. It's mm -hmm. definitely a personal problem. Mm -hmm. And if you can't handle it and you're negative about it, get that shit away. And from I got okay, one for you, too. Thing. I yeah, got okay. one for you, too. It's called, I'm going to get y'all a word before we leave out of here. And my motherfucking line, it's Cap Capital. You can't cap, spend capital. that nowhere. Yeah, yeah, nah, yeah, yeah, you can't spend that nowhere. That's cap capital. That shit is that shit is getting rejected. No it in void. <laughs> do, you, do you think some people don't become entrepreneurs or because they just scared to bet on themselves? Because that's a big part that's of it what too. She said. Everything self doubt is huge. Yeah. yeah, everything is fear. Man, but you, you you could be the one. Yeah. But if you don't believe you the one, you not the Bro, one. Bro, I can have right now ten million dollars, twenty million dollars in the bank, and I can have a project that costs nineteen million eight hundred and ninety nine dollars. I'm <laughs> dropping every all of penny that. of that motherfucker yeah. and believing in my yeah. dream because I, yeah. I know I ain't gonna fail. Every company I ever yeah. touch is a multi million dollar company. I don't, I never went to school to be a, a, a chef. You know, I ain't go to court on blues, none of that. I grow all my shit out the streets. And everything I touch is a multi-million dollar business. Mm. So it's all for your confidence level, which you know you can do. It ain't about mm -hmm. the education you're learning. Because you can learn all that in the book, but can you carry it in the real world? Right. But I also believe, and I just learned this in the last two years, and I used to didn't think this way, but everybody ain't designed to be an entrepreneur. No, no, true. And that's no. Okay, yes. right? Their determination yes. ain't that, even Listen, yes. there's some Somebody people in the world that are a better support system mm -hmm. than just being an entrepreneur. Like, how would, could I be as successful as I am if I didn't have a, a Kia who is my assistant who just makes sure that my life is in order mm -hmm. and she knows how to support people? There's, that's how the world go around. Like, you mm -hmm. need people that are soldiers, and everybody don't want to be an entrepreneur, and that's okay. But as a piggy go, mm -hmm. like, that is my life's desire mm -hmm. to be able to create my own freedom and opportunity so that I can be able to show the world that you can but, do but it. But I also think, Piggy, when people look at us, when you're building all of the foundations you're building, by the end of it, they're going to want to be an entrepreneur anyway because they've been around it so long. Look at all the people blossoming and want to do something, whether it's career-wise mm -hmm. under the same roof. Mm -hmm. It could be under Slutty Vegan, um, Big Days, whatever, but they want to grow. And that's right. what it's about. It's about seeing people grow, not want to stay the fry cook or the grill cook. They actually mm -hmm. might want to be a GM. Mm -hmm. That's what it's all about, about people seeing the growth and the level up of your boss and you like, shit, I want to level up. I know I got people right now. That probably would have stuck to being a fry cook or whatever they wanted to do, but they see me growing. They like shit. I gotta take this serious. And I want to be a manager. Too. Mm -hmm. I want to do something. Mm -hmm. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I think that's what it's all about. Y'all done had some heavy names walk in y'all establishments. So what? What's that one name or those couple names that just fucked y'all up? Like who? Who's there? For me, I, I wasn't even there, man. Russell uh, Wilson and, uh, and Sierra. Sierra. Okay. They come through a lot. You know what I'm saying? And I always right. seem to miss them, mm -hmm. but. The biggest person for me, um, and it wasn't in my restaurant. It was just what I just did in L.A., and that was Will Smith. Because mm. that's my that's my idol, you know what I'm saying? We come from come West Philly. Yeah, from the same place. Philly, like, right. literally, yeah. We, like, right. literally blocks apart. And for him to be on the cover of Essence and me to make cover of Essence, and I was able to have that, you know what I'm saying, that, that transpire and then have him, to meet him in that same moment. Right. And, and to give him, you know, the, the food that I make. I think that was my one of my biggest moments when it comes to celebrity, yeah. and I didn't fed everybody, but that moment that I was waiting it for that meant moment, more. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That moment for me was 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 real big. Mm. Yeah, for me, it it was more of a story. So, the day that I got fired, I was a casting director for a TV show mm -hmm. uh, while I had Slutty Vegan in the beginning. Uh, and I got fired that same day. They found out about Slutty Vegan. I ain't tell nobody. So I'm all bummed out because, you know, I ain't never been fired from no job. Like, you gonna fire me? Mm -hmm. So I got fired, <laughs> and... Ended up working the truck that day. So me and my two team members, we went to Jeju. And it was like 1 o'clock in the morning, and I was tired. And I'm like, damn, what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do. JD called me at 1 o'clock a.m. This after, y'all been to JD before, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. After you get out of the shower, you put your clothes on, you chilling, we eating. And JD called me like, hey, I need you to come right now because I got some people at the studio. And I'm like... Right now, and my people, they were like, We tired, Piggy. We've been working all day. I'm like, Y'all, we gotta do it because if JD calling me, it's somebody big. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, 
literally as soon as we got comfortable, we put our clothes back on, drove an hour to go get the truck, drove 45 minutes to JD studio, and Snoop Dogg was there. Mm. And that was the most impactful experience that I had. One, because he was high as a motherfucker. But <laughs> he looked at me and he was like, I'm just so proud of you. And like, these fries taste good. And that moment, his energy was just so melodic. And I never forgot it. Cause I'm like, this means more to me than a paycheck, mm. right? Like I make the sacrifice yeah. to come here and meet somebody who has always been a legend in my eyes. Right. And then fast forward, he ended up doing a song for me that's being released this year, by the way, um, about okay. Sweaty Vegan. Mm. So oh, but you can okay. drop that, but I can't yeah. drop right now. Yeah. What a double but standard. Listen, but the game come yes. out before the song is dropped, by the way. The game is coming out before the song. But I say all that to say that one of the most memorable people was Snoop because he's always been supporting Slutty Vegan since day one. And I ain't never pay him to do it. I ain't never asked him to do it. He just mm. did it on his own. And I respect that. And I respect celebrities that genuinely do that, that don't need a check to endorse mm. your brand. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I supposed think to be we, down, we don't pay. You're I mean, supposed to be down pay. on yourself. Yeah. About getting fired from that little rinky dink job. Yep. And then they lift back up. So I ain't even mad at it. Hey, but no. the, the, sometimes the biggest obstacles in life and mistakes comes out to the biggest things ever in your life. Fact. You don't even know that Always. shit happening Fact. that way. You can't Always. question God. You just be like, mm-hmm. man, I'm going to roll with the punches. And yeah. I promise you, some outcome of that shit, you're going to mm-hmm. learn a lesson from it or you're going to get up from it. And you're be like, damn, it was worth it. Yeah. So I don't question nothing no more. When I'm going through, you get spoiled in this. You know what I'm saying? In this life. How what I mean get... by that is like, you, you get spoiled to. The, the headlines, the, mm-hmm. all that stuff that come with it. And sometimes you got to be real with yourself. Like, I can't handle this shit right now. I need a mental break. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Right. So I think that's when you get leverage of your own self and not lose yourself. Do right. you hire your family? Do you any of y'all hire your family? <laughs> don't ask me because I'm going to tell the truth. The truth? We don't be <laughs> nah, hire Oh, this is big facts. Oh, I don't hire family no more. That nah, was the biggest no mistake that I love Trying y'all. Trying to put them in a position that I, they don't want to be, li- they can't. Yeah. If y'all listening to this, I love y'all, but I will never hire you again. Mm. Um, and I think that, and universally, right, I'm sure that other cultures are able to do it, but my family specifically, while I love them, I think that people just naturally have a level of entitlement. I'm the baby, facts. right? Mm-hmm. So they say, oh, this is just pinky. No, it's not just pinky. This is pinky who's the CEO of this company. You got to respect my decisions. Mm-hmm. And, and, my and my boundaries. And my boundaries. The reason if you don't respect that, then you got to go. But family not yeah, going right. to respect that. So that's uh, she, uh, she taught me like, did my business, yeah, bro. You need to go on, man. And right. people can't respect that. So I, I just got my last family member out the business. I love him to death, but I sent him on his way. Um, and it was amicable. And I still love my all of my family members. But I know that in order to grow what I'm trying to and grow, I'd rather give them money to start their own business. Yeah. So yeah. that they can be yeah. their own boss, mm-hmm. right? So that they yeah. ain't got to impede on what I got going on. I got one left. Okay. He, he got it. He got it together, though. You know what I'm saying? I got one left. It's working. He, okay. at the t- he up at the top. You know what I'm saying? But he different. He understands. He's mature enough to understand. What one we, for what Derek. <laughs> Everybody for Pinky. Oh, but, okay. I, but I definitely <laughs> then went through the same shit. I cleared and cleared them all out because it's the entitlement from it. Shit, I how, you have, deal with, how y'all deal with entitlement, though? Um, You got to get away from it. You got to literally yeah. get away from it. You gotta, it's kind of hard, though. No, I'm going to tell you why you got to get away from it because we all got... That phone call that call your phone, you already know that shit about to be an irritating phone call. So before you answer, you got the you got the decision whether you wanna, you know, you pick it up or not and deal with it. You over there breaking the microphone right. and shit. Cause this is this a deep topic. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, Shake it in there. But people definitely well, at least gotta... you know they can pay for it. <laughs> Shake it in there. Like, Listen, what's up? entitlement is real because it it don't just be family. So remember, we got startup companies. So there were people that started up with my company that naturally had a level of entitlement. They yeah. like, I started this with you, so yeah. this mine too. Yeah. Well, you get a paycheck too, right? <laughs> or it's mine <laughs> on paper, right? Yeah. And you also have to respect the boundaries. And that can get very mucky. Fortunately for me, yeah. the people who've been riding with me from the beginning, I all gave them equity into my company because I want to oh, show them big. that they are just as valued as me and this company. But there have been some people that slipped through the cracks that felt like that their name was Pinky Cole. And sometimes you just got to really like check it. And if you don't check it, then it can really become a cancer in yeah, your business sure. and hurt It'll everything else. Yeah, for sure. Yes. Ooh, I done dealt with that more than enough time. Yeah, but you gotta get a you gotta get your dogs that have been rocking with you some equity though. Yeah. The ones that have been rocking with you, knowing carrying the mm-hmm. legacy, you mm-hmm. gotta make sure they're taken care of. Cause yeah. them people in there working every day, sweating, you know what I'm saying? We mentally growing our businesses now. It's right. a it's a different thing. Like I tell them all the time. When I was in there chopping cheese sticks and doing that shit every day, it was more physical. But this mm-hmm. way, you don't want none of this stress. You don't mm-hmm. want to deal with none of this shit. 
these bills, right. the, everything that come with it. You doing interviews. You got to make sure that everything you put out in the media, people understand you and mm -hmm. not what they, per, you know, perceptive of or perceive. Mm -hmm. So, and being entrepreneurs, we don't have that privilege to like rappers and, and do bullshit and all that, you know, or, yeah, or, yeah, 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 yeah. or anybody else. It'll affect your whole business. Yeah, because yeah. like what I mean is we literally got to walk on a straight arrow, but we got to give you the game where you can understand it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that yeah. shit ain't easy sometimes. But when you yourself, nothing can trump that because you ain't listening to the outside world. You know what you represent. You know who you are. You know what you're building. Facts. What's lifestyle like for y'all? Like, just step out of entrepreneur. I know it's hard, but what's lifestyle like if you just having a... Or what's some shit that y'all like, like to do or enjoy or some <laughs> activities or anything when you guys are not Pinky Cole and Derek Hayes, Slutty Vegan, Dave Cheesesteaks? You guys are just <laughs> Big Pinky and Big Dave, big, big, the family. Hey, we travel. We like, we the, like, the, like to travel. We like to travel. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I smoke. I, that's why I like to. I like to go in my little my little smoke room, mm -hmm. have my man little free cave. time, turn some yeah, my little man cave, turn some uh, ESPN on, and blow it down. But I, I think with both of us, we we uh we do good at when we um <laughs> let them know she blaze machine. You know <laughs> But you said it on camera. But no, but honestly, I think when we ain't doing business, what we like to do is travel. Mm -hmm. We like to just see the world. She she actually um when I met her, she was like, You ain't got your passport? I'm like, no, nah. she's like, Oh, you gotta get your passport. Yeah, so I done popped them. a lot of cherries with her, you yes, know what I'm saying? So, so I done did a lot of stuff where you know I, at the end of the day, bro, I, leaving the neighborhood was enough for me so when i left when i left out of uh philly i was i was going to uh i was in athens georgia i was playing basketball my you know my grandparents and all that so when i used to go to athens that was my escape that would be like me going out of yeah. the country and i come back to philly you know at the end of the summer they'd be like you've been going the whole summer i'm like yeah man you know they got the green grass the trees and all that shit got the swim pool <laughs> so that was me vacationing so now i'm able yeah. to see like the rest of the world and see what I work hard for. I'm able to go fishing. I love fishing. Because I feel like fishing is life, right? If you patient, and eventually you, you get will right get catch. what you're catch looking the big, for. Yeah. You know hard. what I'm saying? So Back. when I go fishing, and you fishing with somebody that's just like, damn, I ain't catch shit, and they keep nagging you, yeah. that's because you ain't going to ever get shit because you ain't patient. You got to just take your time and relax and wait for your fish to bite. And it might be the biggest fish you ever caught. Fact. It might have took you about an hour or two to catch that fish. But tell them why you like to fish, Because though. of my father. I mean, you know, the way I grew up. I mean, have my, you ever, let me ask you this, have you ever hooked your finger before? I actually did a couple times. That's the, but that's I still, the worst shit, no, most let me tell you some funny shit in the world. Though, man, oh, my God. I, 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 uh, I still do not take a fish off the hook, though. <laughs> really? <laughs> no. I don't fuck with catfish. Listen, <laughs> I take any fish oh, off the yeah. hook with a catfish because they terrible. sting you. Yeah. So I'm sorry. There's a couple of catfish and that out shit there hurts. swimming around with the hook. That shit, shit hurts like the worst way. <laughs> hey, oh do, you think, do you think being in a relationship keep you grounded for not, like you said earlier, buying the cars and doing all the extra shit? Well, you looking at somebody that blew a million dollars in a year. Hell yeah, keep me grounded. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like when I came to Atlanta, all I wanted to do was, uh, well, I was disabled for five years. I had an accident. So when I came here, all I wanted to do was like have a normal life party. I seen people that look like me, they driving Lambos and shit in Philly, it ain't like that. Mm -hmm. You get robbed and killed looking like that. So everything was here was you could show it off. So while I was out here, you know, blowing my money and not realizing what I was doing, I was setting myself up to go back home. You know what I'm saying? So when I realized everything that I, all my mistakes and everything I did in my life, I knew that I would never ever make another mistake to go backwards. So that's what I really wanted. You know what I'm saying? That was everything with it. What about you, Pink? You think you'll be I'm very designing proud big it. bags and all that? Nah. Nah. First of all, he he's a flashy guy. I'm not flashy at all. Um, nah, I'm not flashy. I just know. All right, look. He I'm like just, nice things, I, right? I, I know the. I, I'm from the. I'm we culture. But, but it'll be time teens if you want in a relationship. But listen. Basically. It'll be time. She keep like, me nah. She keep me grounded because I ain't gonna lie. All right. I be like, no, so I do gotta. Do that. My, my, I mean, <laughs> I gotta have a nice car and a nice house. So that's the two things that I like. I I gave up on the jewelry. I ain't really jewelry crazy. I ain't no rapper. I really never was really into all of that. But you know, I got a nice car and a, a, and a house. But I think those are the two things that if you work hard, you know, what I'm saying you want you wanna. Walk outside from your place of business to your vehicle, trophy. and you want to go into you your, your house. You want your trophy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What you what you See, love. See, I'm a penny yeah. pincher, and I'm proud of it. Right? I'm very <laughs> frugal. Right? As much money as I make and do well, like I'm very frugal because I'm Jamaican. So I grew up in a Jamaican household. We eat leftovers for the next three days. Mm -hmm. So like I love leftovers. Right? Like mm -hmm. I don't really like buying food all the time. So like we had a separation in culture. So when we came together, I'm like we eating out again every day. Oh, like, she cabin. Yeah. She cabin. <laughs> No, listen. You see my assistant I'm a, over here. I'm a, Kids, I'm gonna tell, tell you, the truth. Listen, I'm going to tell you what it was. It was it was in the beginning, we had to get used to what restaurants. 
You know what I'm saying? We eating it. Well, that too. But Atlanta I think... got, we got good restaurants, but Atlanta does have a lot of bad restaurants. I mean, I'm, I'm gonna put Big it fact. out there. So a lot of people, it's, it's not a lot of good cooking. I'm not coming at nobody restaurant in, in, in general. But, you know, in but Atlanta. But if you don't want your CEO all in the video. <laughs> yeah. But overall, I think that. Yeah, um, in Atlanta, you it, know what I'm we saying. We do keep if ourselves grounded. you don't want grounded. parsley all on your broccoli. <laughs> we, keep our, we keep ourselves grounded because um, we always think about big picture now, right? Because, like, he, he had two kids before we had our two kids, having two kids. But, like, now it's about future and, like, making sure that the kids got 529 plans and, right, and life insurance See, and, like, deep. insurance yeah. plans. That's like, deep. A lot of people it, don't even bigger know than what bag, that is. Right? right? That's bigger than, like, shoes and shit. Like, and real estate yeah. is important <laughs> in building generational wealth because right. I want to be able to leave my children with something. And, and and I'm sure that people who are entrepreneurs, everybody should think that way too, right? right. I want to be able to have something that my kids don't have to work if they don't want to and they can focus on their dreams and not the stresses of paying bills. So all of this right now is patient capital. Like we working hard right. now so and later. reinvesting everything back into our businesses. And I mean, we could really live lavishly, but I don't think we live very modest. Would you agree? Yeah, I think we do, and I also yeah. think that anybody that lived our life and what we what we have, they would pretty much look at it like they set forever. But yeah. we know we want, and we yeah. know this is a stepping stone. But you gotta have whether it's man or woman, your partner gotta be somebody that understands you and gotta keep you grounded because yeah. we don't make financial decisions just to make them like, I know I ain't gonna go. Buy a three hundred thousand dollar car. We ain't making a decision on together. you know what I'm saying what we doing together. So we already move as one union, and we was able to make millions together that way. So I think when you out there doing separate shit, you know how you come in the household, and then chick might come in there with a five six thousand dollar Chanel bag coming from uh, Phipps, and you like, damn, we could have did something with that. You know what I'm saying? And it only take you know depending on how much you make, it only take three percent. You know what I'm saying? To go invest in yourself to go get a property. Right. You know, or twenty percent if you if you doing a bank statement loan or have a you know, you wanna purchase a property, but you could take your money that you you know, your fifteen, twenty thousand that you probably was gonna go put on a Rolex or whatever you was gonna do, mm -hmm. drop that into a property, six, seven months from now, that property might jump sixty, seventy thousand dollars, go mm -hmm. pull that money out or just sell the property. And you didn't came up all the way around almost a hundred grand mm -hmm. when you only invested, you know what I'm saying, maybe forty, fifty thousand dollars. So right. you know, real estate is a, a a patient play. And I think for our culture, that's one of the things that we have the hardest time with because we wanna see our money in the bank. We don't know how to, like if you got this shit in real estate, it's the same thing, bro. Yeah. If I'm ready to go tell you I got 13, 15 houses, it's like having three, four million sitting in the bank account. Mm -hmm. It's the same way. But For when sure. you understand it's that, you don't got to trick yourself out to cash it out because money don't have a nine to five. It ain't working for you. It's just chilling. Your property is a nine to five because it's actually growing equity on it. So while you pulling your job, it's actually working. Right. If you got a bunch of cash just sitting, it ain't working mm -hmm. unless you putting it to work. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But we want to go to our money and be like, shit, I got 40, 50. I'm going to go pull this shit out and go to the club, have this shit in my pocket. Nah, when you talk to me, I'm going to tell you about my portfolio. Nah, I got 20 cribs, and I'm doing this, and I'm doing that. Mm -hmm. And I'm doing this with my money. You know what I'm saying? And I can get around the biggest rappers or anybody right now, and my portfolio and what I built is strong enough to stand with any of them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So oh, let me shit. ask y'all this. So in the midst of your frugality, <laughs> do you guys have any vices? Oh, yeah. Um, I'm honest, man. I think the most thing that I had to deal with my vice was being honest with myself when I came to Atlanta. You, what you mean? You, you grow through so much uh, shit growing up in life, you think that's the honest thing you're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't never think you're doing wrong when you in the shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? When you in it, yeah. it feels good. I got the opportunity to be around, you know, another family when I came to Atlanta. It was a Jewish family. Mm -hmm. And, um... What did that teach you? It taught me another side because I seen a guy send his kids to college off of, you know, cash rewards. You know how you get your money back on your credit cards? <laughs> so imagine 18 years, right? You got a company giving you cash rewards and you taking it every month and depositing it into a savings account. And that's your college, your kid's college fund. It's free money. Mm -hmm. So I was able to learn, you know, opportunity and resources through what they was learning. Wow. So the shit that I was brought up off of, like, honestly, I'm not going to lie. My family... We was we was blue collar workers, but we had shit 
that we weren't supposed to have because we thought we were supposed to have it. Like, my family, my brothers, they all had Benz and shit growing up, but we might be making forty, fifty thousand dollars a year, and you got a hundred and twenty thousand dollar car. That shit don't add up. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But we we taught them be good, I mean to look good and don't be good. All right. Mm-hmm. So now I'm changing the narrative and being good while y'all pretending to look good. I'm actually good. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> while you out even there, though you dude. might not see it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, I mean if anybody's uh, smart, they know I'm good. Yeah, they see. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah, but what it. I'm saying is, but what I mean by that is, like. You everybody out here like you got rappers right, but then they got homeboys that look better than them. Why the fuck are you dressed better than me? I'm getting paid for the show. Why are you spending five six thousand on the outfit? I'm getting a bag for the five six thousand on the outfit. Yeah, so yeah, that's yeah. what we gotta realize yeah. is, don't waste your bag on something trying to keep up with the next man that's making hundreds and hundreds of thousand dollars every other every that other you week. You don't stand a chance. You know what I'm saying? In real not, competition. You gotta stay in your own yeah. lane and to stay in your financial lane. You gotta be real with yourself and cool with yourself. Mm-hmm. So. I think that was something I really had to work on myself with because I always been a dreamer. I be, all my friends is almost multi millionaires, right? So right. I'm around all this shit. I see it all, but all it was doing was gearing me up for what I wanted more for myself. I did no hating, I did no begging, I did no asking. I right. got motivated. Let me be around so you can motivate me, so I could be a better me. That's all I ever asked any man for. Mm. Let me get the motivation. Thank you. I got people on my phone right now. I might send a text message to. I just told DJ Drama the other day, I tell you know, Drama, thank you for the motivation. Let allow me to be around, bro. Let me see this shit throughout the years. Because mm-hmm. now I see another black man do this shit. It makes me now be able to do it. It makes me more, you know, belief in myself to say, oh, I seen, you know, the inside of Rick Ross' house. He walked me around. I see you living in the state. This is another black man right. that did it. Or mm-hmm. or the same thing, vice versa with me. You know, when I was in the in the gas station, you know what I'm saying? I was fortunate, you know. Meek did the same thing. You know, I'm I'm now seeing, you know, mm-hmm. super mansions, different lifestyles. But this is stuff that you seeing, you know, from a, a person that looked just like you from the same ghettos, mm-hmm. just like you. Right. And how can't you get motivated from that and want more out yourself? Facts. Facts. So my vice is Let's go, Pinky Girl. Tell and I'm us. being totally transparent. <laughs> yes. I have a problem with turning it off sometimes. And when you say, I get, I know what you mean, but like for those of out there that might not get it quite turn yet, off, turn off the hustle. You mean? Yeah. 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 Never turn that thing don't get turned off. It, so it, it, it's a blessing and a curse, right? So okay, the blessing here is that it never feels like work for me. That I just love what I do, mm-hmm. but the curse here is that sometimes it can impede on my relationships because I'm always just on. I'm always thinking about the next way to take over the world all of the time. Yeah, mm-hmm. and finding balance is a little difficult at times. But in my world, it's just like, well, this is my balance. That's what I was saying earlier. Right, that's, that's, that's my reason. Purpose. So, like, when you say, like, what is your vice? I'm sitting here thinking, like, what do I do that, like, I do in excess? And right. it's like, like, I don't know how to cut my research light off, right? Like I'm always right. on the internet researching, mm-hmm. always trying to figure it out. And maybe that is not a vice, right? Maybe the most successful people in the world yeah. do what I do, right? Yeah. Um, but do I do I need to find more balance? Somebody else probably would say yeah, but I mean it's a healthy vice for me. I mean it works you know, for you. And you it know, works. But it you works know. because of the relationship though, because that's like if y'all like y'all doing the radio it's like, yeah, yeah, your significant other at home. Don't get that. All right, if, the, if I ain't doing radio, I still got to work on the show. I still got shit to do. So that All other right. person got to understand what you're doing. So when the other person understands what you're doing, it makes it a lot easier. She don't turn it off, but I don't turn it off. Mm. And when I'm halfway there, when I do got to halfway off, she turn it back on for me, so we get mm. back at it. So I think that's why it's easier. I don't think you could be with just anybody. Yeah. No, I'm dead serious. You can't. Like, not to toot your own horn or anything. Nah. Right. Nah. Yeah. Oh, I'm a hell of a nigga. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta, listen, that's basically You gotta, you gotta, you gotta be a hell yeah. of a nigga to yeah. be with Pinky Cole. I'm just being honest. Yeah. Nah, it's real. She going to wear it. Like, if and I'm not, that nigga. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's either you going to get wore out, bro, or you going to get motivated by it because, yeah. like, yeah. sometimes sex is building companies, bro. You get what I'm saying? Of course, we get it in. We got t- almost two babies in less than two years. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just saying to us, it will be four or five in the morning, you know, yeah. building something. Yeah. yeah. So I, I don't have a turn off switch. Nah, so. you don't. That That's probably like yeah, the what, only but, real but, So I just recently had a kid in October, but that, did did the baby create a switch for Because it definitely turned me off for say, like, there's more to the world in hustling and entrepreneurship. Mm-hmm. 
Even even with Only the baby in your hand, because you can't talk to the. <laughs> <laughs> it's called help. Um, and if we didn't have the help, then maybe. But we got help, and we got like real help, which I got feel you. like every new mother should have. Like, and I don't feel guilty of mm. getting that kind of help, mm. right? I feel like when a woman has a baby, there should be somebody around her supporting mm. her and helping her. Mm. I, I was the youngest. I didn't even know how to change a diaper when I had my daughter. I'm being totally transparent, right? Mm. So my mother is really my saving grace outside of Derek, obviously. But like, mm. she came in and make sure. She that everything that we need we got so that we can continue to build our empires because mm. she knows that the work that we're putting in now is going to pay off later so like no, nothing and I tell women this all the time like I want to show people that you can be a mother you can be a boss you can be a partner to your spouse and be all of these things and still be beautiful all at the same time and you can have it all and you don't have to compromise mm. you and know sometimes we have Jamaican yeah, my house is real Jamaican. Very Jamaican. But people feel like the minute that you have a baby that you got to slow down. You got to, like, I ne- I don't want to slow down. Like, mm. I want to be able to be a great mother and still be a great CEO. And you don't have to choose one. You can mm. still be great at both of them as long as you have the support that you need. Right. Yeah. Makes yeah. Sense. Remember when she just had the, uh, the fever the other night? She want to take it to the hospital. I said on the second one, you ain't going to oh, yeah. be doing all that because you're going to get used to it. You know when the baby starts teething, mm-hmm. you know they start getting temperatures and all that. Mm-hmm. I already got two kids. Yeah, I'm in so the I'm hospital. So I'm telling panicking. her like, hey, listen, relax. Yeah, right. It's, it's going to be okay. I'm like, but, you don't understand. But, yeah, but so I think, you know, you going through all that. You know, the next one will be, you know, even easier. Well, you know I hope so, because the kitchen is closed oh, this after is such this. a yeah. moment right here. <laughs> no, the like... kitchen is definitely closed. You know what I'm saying? The kitchen is closed. It ain't hot in the kitchen no more, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all got any final words for the big facts supporters and the slutty vegan supporters and the big Dave cheese stick supporters? We always like to give game and motivation before we wrap um, on big facts. I started off, I'll let you close, Pinky. Um, I always tell people in life, it's not a track meet, it's a marathon. It's all about how you end. So don't worry about the next man or next woman growing faster than you. Hey, your, your game plan set so that you can end the race. Race the finish line. That's mm-hmm. all it's about, ending the mm-hmm. race, crossing the line. No matter who finished first, as long as you finish it. So stop worried about, you know what I'm saying, who running it up the most, who getting the most success right now. Mm-hmm. Learn your shit so that you can now finish the race. Because if you don't finish the race, then you ain't complete shit. And that's the best advice I can give you. It's like almost like reading a book and not understanding the words. You can't just yeah, live that's to a waste live. of time. Yeah, you can't just live your life to live. You got to live for a purpose. And if you're out here just living to live and you're wasting your life because every day is a clock ticking on that motherfucker. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, that's right there, down. that's my big facts Bible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so mine is inspired by my favorite quote which is a lyric from a rap song, and it goes something like this. You better lose yourself in the moment. The moment you own it, you better never let it go. You only got one shot. Do not miss your chance to blow because opportunity comes once in a lifetime. No, okay. Yeah. And that's, that's yeah. Eminem. Slutty M. And <laughs> Slutty M. Anybody that knows me knows that I live and I die by that verse and that song because every single opportunity that I get, I seize it. I seize that moment because I know that it may never happen again. Right. So when you stay ready... You ain't never got to get ready mm. when you're always prepared and always ready for that big opportunity. Even if you don't see it in the distance, that one opportunity is going to come for you and you ain't even got to practice for it. You ain't got to prepare because you've been doing it. You've been practicing. You've been in the trenches. So utilize every single opportunity as you, as that moment so that when you get it, it'll all pay off. And right. that's what I've been doing for the last I'm team years, and and I, part of the reason why I've been getting all of the success in my life because I utilize every single opportunity, big and small, mm. as that one moment that's going to take me to the next level. That's going to change the dynamic of my entire family. Uh, for real, because you see something else for yourself. That's yeah, what it something is. else for myself. <laughs> Not <Yeah>. real shit. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Appreciate y'all pulling up the big facts. You know, y'all welcome anytime. Y'all welcome to drop our food anytime, too. Y'all just extra, extra, extra. Yeah, yeah, I got y'all, big how you get a burger for life card? Up. That's what I want to know. What them cards? Hey, you know what? I might, I might do a VIP card. Who knows? <laughs> next marketing play. Sure. www.bigfactspod.com. Salute. Nah, thank you, bro. Appreciate it. Yeah. Y'all.